Okay, well, I decided to do this now. The, uh, the butterfly fluke thing before my neighbor's dog woke, wakes up. And, uh, it already did. Mike, I had Mike Daly call me to tell me to tell, so I could tell him how I made out after he left. And I was talking to him way over by the fence there, and I was being really quiet. And the dog came out and started barking. I don't know if the neighbor came out and said something about it. If not, the dog, I don't know, maybe knew that it was going to get a knife thrown at it. Not really. I mean, it's his dog. I wouldn't do that. But it is really flipping annoying. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and clean the fish now. And this is kind of cool. See this here? It's all bleached out. That is from this fish laying on that fish of the lake of that. All right, the, uh, and there's a little bit going on here. This is actually the chromatophores in the skin bleach out when it's covered. And it makes it pale like that. But anyway, so you're going to need, uh, for this, you're going to need a scaler, a scissors, a knife, and probably a steel, and a beer. And uh, this is, oh, there's a, there's a gnat in it. This is a uh, potato parsnip carrot wine that I made. And it's pretty good. Not really, it's kind of bad. But oh no, that's tomato wine. <coughs> That's a failed experiment. That's tomato wine, I think, and it's oh, we won't be drinking that. Oh, that's terrible. Don't ever make tomato wine. Oh God, that's freaking horrible. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna scale them up first. We're gonna do this quiet and quick before the dog wakes up. Start its tail. Head to the head towards the head. Alright, we're going to leave the head on these. So we're going to scale it all the way up. Oh, it's a good thing I'm wearing clean pants, huh? We're going to scale all the way up to the head. And you don't need a fancy scaler like this. You don't need to, you know, even a knife. You can, you can do this with a knife. I, I would, but I'd probably cut through the skin with this. You can, you can do it with a knife, but not too good for the knife. So this would be good for like stuffing, uh, to bake in the oven, or you could remove the bone. You like put kind of like a bread stuffing, or a, I think they do it with uh, uh, what do you call it? Fennel. They stuff it with fennel and vegetables, and it's put either, you know, like wrapped in the foil, put on the grill. That's a popular thing to do with it. I don't, I'm not into that. Uh, you know, if you're going to steam a fish, steam it. If you're going to cook it dry, cook it dry. But to put something on the grill wrapped in foil means it's going to steam. So why even put it on the grill? You can, fish works really fish works really well uh, microwaved. If you put it in the microwave, um, it cooks really fast. And you can cook all fish in the microwave. You can cook uh, scallop, shrimp, clams. You know, I worked, when I was a, working in seafood a lot in retail, uh, I would bring home you know, at the end of a long day, I didn't want to go to the food store, so I just shop it, you know, shop at work. So I'd bring home, you know, half, eight, eight little necks, half a dozen dry scallops, half a dozen peeled vein shrimp. Just bring them home, put them in the microwave, boil some pasta, and put some butter in it at the very end. That's another thing. You know what? When you're cooking fish, no matter how you cook it, if you put butter on it in the beginning, 
and the butter's going to melt off. You're not going to get the flavor from it. So a pat of butter at the very end will, will, will go a lot longer, go a lot farther than a pat of butter um, in the beginning. Because it'll, it'll all just kind of disappear. That's, uh, that's my words of wisdom for the day. Thank you. So every step, clean up after that step. Oh, and if you haven't seen them, if you want to know how to fillet a fluke, check out uh, how to fillet a fluke uh, or filleting fluke left and right handed. I think that's what I called it, or I'm going to call it. I'm having a little trouble with the edit. A lot of trouble with the edit. I got a. Uh, New software and it's not, it's not, um, yeah. One of these days I'll figure this whole thing out. All right, so what we're gonna do is essentially we're gonna take the backbone out of this thing, all right, and we're gonna leave the head on, and then we're gonna remove as many bones as we can. We're gonna leave just the uh, the bones up here in the collar, like this bone, like remember when, when we did the striped bass, we filleted the striped bass, there was this bone here and the wing, remember the wing? This is the wing on a fluke, it's considerably small, smaller. So there's this bone here and then there's some bones right, right here, but really not too bad. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just cut these ribbon fins or the uh, the dorsal fin we're going to cut that kind of close we're going to cut into the meat and we're going to cut this kind of close you're not even seeing it are you there we go see that so we're just going to go right up like these yeah, it was a nice night tonight it was kind of cold on the way home which was kind of good because I uh could have fallen asleep very easily on the way home. All right, so we're going to do two of these. It's been a while, so be patient. Oh, we're at seven minutes, almost at eight minutes. This is going to be it's going to be a longer video. I thought maybe I could get it done. I probably should have scaled one of them first, eh? Well, anyway. You want to know how to do it? I guess you got to watch the whole video. Watch the whole video till the end. And these scissors aren't the greatest, but uh, the other ones are wrapped up in a big blanket with all the knives, and it's like a safety hazard for somebody in my state of mind to be unwrapping a huge blanket full of knives. So you get what you get. All right. So next step, we're gonna come in here and. Remember I was talking about that bone right here? There's uh, the skull bone that comes back here, and then there's this bone right here. And this bone is attached to down here. It's, it's not like a hard attachment, it's loose. So when you go like that, see that? That bone is loose. So we're gonna get the knife behind that bone, and we're just gonna clear it, we're gonna free it up. All right, then we're going to come around the front like this, and we're going to free it up on the front. See that? And unfortunately, you do have to cut through some bones when you do this, but it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, and I did not sharpen. I didn't ask my son to sharpen my knife yet, so it is not terribly sharp still. All right, so that's that. I apologize, I'm kind of out of practice by doing, by doing this here. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get the gills out. Alright, and we're going to cut down the belly here. Okay, you could do this with the knife, I prefer to do it with the scissors. Yeah, you don't want to cut through the bile sac necessarily, but... Oh yeah, and these, these fish, I can't wait to see if there's anything in either of the fish's bellies. There was some kind of bait fish in the water with the shrimp, but um, 
Yeah, he's got nothing in his belly. Well, he's got nothing fresh in his belly. I can smell he's got some uh, some nasty stuff in there. All right, so there's uh, there's two uh, row sets in this fish. I'll show you what they look like. Maybe. All right, so this is all the intestines and the gills. Uh, is that the dog? Then these are the row sets. Now you can either pull them out now or they'll come out when we do the fillet or do the, uh, the boning. So again, we're going to free up this one. Whoops. Uh, I just got my pants all dirty. Damn it, I was going to wear these all day tomorrow too. <laughs> tomorrow, yeah, today. Wow. Alright, so we're just going to free this bone up here. Alright. And I'm not breaking any speed records with this one here, but we'll get it done. So that's that. That's that bone. We're going to come in, free the belly up so we can get in there and remove the guts. We're going to clip the gills right there. We are. Uh, yeah, we can just pull them out. Them. Spoiled with the tools here. Hey, Mike's a madman. He's he fished till one. Uh, no, it's actually like one thirty. Uh, something like that. Drove home, so two thirty, three o'clock slept for an hour he said and he's in Pennsville or Penns Grove someplace right now at work ready to work and more than likely we'll be doing this again on Saturday night very likely we'll be doing it on Saturday night all right so I'm gonna get I'm gonna put these somewhere off of my cutting board and they can go right here all right, so that's pretty good. One thing you want to make sure you do when you get in here, see that membrane that's on this bloodline right here? You want to kind of puncture that, like liberate it. So that when you blast it with the hose, it'll be nice and clean. And you kind of got to blast it really hard to get it all to come out. So, I mean, it's not imperative that you do it that way, but just helps to clean up after each step. So this will be nice and clean. And, uh, you know, they won't be slimy after this. a little bit like fish just a little bit all right so the steel uh, if you watch my other videos you know this is how I steal it's probably not the right way to steal I realize that this steel typically they have like an arrow on them on the steel and that means you're supposed to steal it in that direction on both sides but you know this is how I do it so if you steal away from it you if you if you do it this way and you steal away from you last again it turns the burr up this way on the knife so when you're cutting down it's not going to cut into the bones like that all right all right so here's what we're going to do we're going to get i'm going to try to get the good shot of this we're going to get on the top side of the backbone we're not going to worry about the rib bones the pin bones all that stuff we're going to go back and take that out after so here's the spine Sorry, here's the spine running right down here. So we're going to be on this side of the spine. We're going to, there we go. 
we're going to be on this side of the spine. There's the spine here, so imagine that's the spine. We're going to be on the, uh, the ventral side of the spine. We're going to run the knife down and just come out this whole side right here. It's going to be like an envelope when we get done. I guess that's a good way to explain it. All right, so we're going to go right out. <clears throat> Right, and then we're gonna, it's just like filleting now, but we're not gonna go out the other side. Check it out. All right, you can't see it, can you? All right, I'm like, I'm doing the limbo here so you can see really well. So we're gonna go down the other side of the knife. You notice the knife is on a pretty decent angle. It's not flat like that, right? We're going down that side of the backbone. We're gonna just draw it all the way up through these pin bones, okay? And if you notice, I'm using the tip of the knife. It's going to dull really quick. All right, so now this is kind of tricky. can be kind of tricky, but you, you want to go just like you're filleting it. You just want to kind of liberate it up here towards the head. All right, and then you just kind of walk the knife just to the edge of the other side. Okay, so you got to be kind of careful. You just kind of tiptoe through the... Okay, just like that, and you'll see when the ribbons, they don't really matter right now, okay, see that, that's pretty good, eh, now, I guess we'll go through while we're working on this side, and we'll free up the rib bones, okay, now once you get the knife started, bear down on the knife, you see that, now I'm pressing down, you see how that, meat is the flesh is moving when I'm pushing down you can take a really really thin sliver of, of meat off with that doing it that way okay so you're not wasting fish ready all right and then the other see there's no no bones in that no bones there no bones down there the only other bones that are here are the pin bones and they are right here you can feel them if you go from the head towards the tail and they run back to uh, halfway between the pelvic fin and the vent all right now I felt I felt the knife run through something there and show sure enough there's a bone that's a good way to investigate if there's bones, just run your knife down. Uh, and if it's the tip of the knife is jumping over bones, you'll feel it. You'll definitely feel it. Okay, so this side, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna we're gonna pull up on the knife. Okay? Now again it's important to bring your work to the edge of the table. Alright. So you see the knife going in there? See that? That's what we're doing. Alright, then we're just gonna come out the other side. Now you gotta kinda deal with the uh, the this part here. And you can bisect it real easy. See that? If you get right in between uh, where the pelvic bones come together, you can get in there. Oops, you can get in there and uh, cut it in half real easy. But once you get down to this point, right? Um, sometimes it helps if, let's see, yeah, I'll show you here, all right, so we're just going to go, this is a swipe, we're going to go into the backbone, all right, and then just walk the knife through, okay. I'm like, you, you, I, I should turn the camera around and show you how I'm standing. It's not very natural how I'm standing, so that you can see what I'm doing. Not very natural at all. Um, yeah, I was going to say, you can clip here, okay, clip here, if you want the tail to be together. So it would be like that, almost like having a stitch in it, right? 
but we're just gonna leave it out. Maybe I'll do the other one that way. I'll show you how to do that. But now, see we've gotten the whole piece liberated with the, I can't see again. Gotta get in the limbo stance, the limbo position for you. So we're gonna just keep going up, right? And then here, okay, you just cut where the, where this, the spine, the rib bones, they're hinged right here at this spot. If you get right in that hinge, you can just cut through one and then the rest of them, it'll just right, follow right up through. That is terrible grammar, but hopefully you get the idea. All right, so here's an important part here. You don't want to cut through the skin on the other side, right? And once you get it pretty much all liberated, you use the scissors. Once you get it all liberated, right? You want to use the scissors and just cut right through one of these uh, vertebrae near the uh, near the head. Is that cervic vertebrae? Or cervic? Is that the right word? I forget. I'm very tired. All right, so here's the deal. When you get it to this point, once you get into the ribbon, you can take this. The scissors here, right, and you can just run right back like this. All right, that's that's not too bad, not too bad. Right, it's always a little bit shakier up here because you're. You're working in the fish, and you you, you can't really kind of see where you're at, where you be at. All right, so this side is boneless, right? This side still has the rib bones, still has the wing bone, and still has the pin bone. So we're going to take care of that right now. Oh, and I saw a bone on the fin. Here's a here's a bone. Ah, I'm gonna get stuff all over my pants if I squat down on the table. See that bone right there? And we're just gonna go under and out. That's good to go. All right, so the rib bones on this side are gonna be a little more difficult because we have the head that's kind of in the way, but it's the same thing. Get the knife started, and you can actually you can do this from this side, be easier. Flip it around. Now, you don't have to cut the belly. You don't wanna cut the belly off. All you wanna do is liberate the bones here, and they only run back right about there. I mean, they are probably back a little farther, but when you cook them, they cook out. You know, they're so soft. It's like shad. You can cook shad, American shad, uh, for like two hours at 250 degrees, and the bones will cook out. All right, so here's the, uh, the pin bones here. There's the pin bones here. We're just going to go down one side of them, down the other side of them. I missed, the, I missed the rib bone there. Down one side, down the other. Turn the knife flat, and they'll come right out. See that? There's nothing, nothing special about. Cleaning fish, they're all the same. You know, people say like, oh, is that a bony fish? Well, no, not really. It's not any more bony than any other fish. Do you mean does it have small bones that are, you know, hard to detect or hard to cut out, but is a porgy more bony than a, than a sea bass? No, they probably have pretty much the same amount of bones, same number of bones, same bone structure, right? But one is just more difficult to clean, so people have the misconception that it is more bony, but no, indeed it is not more bony. All right, so, there we go. That is a, a fluke. Oh yeah, you can't even see it again. That's a fluke that is all ready for this stuffing. So you would get your whatever stuffing you want, and it goes in there. And you, know, you put 
you could put whatever you want in there really I was just gonna say lemons uh, I'm not a big fan of lemons on fish I'm not a big fan of lemon lemons in, in maybe anything but Corona or lemonade and people that put lemon on fish should try um, they should try balsamic vinegar instead and it is or even malt vinegar I, I never had malt vinegar but I hear that's pretty good on uh, fish and chips you know the British thing the cod fried cod malt vinegar it's on all the tables over in uh, over in uh, England all right so yeah, I'm gonna just do this without any commentation and probably I won't be pointing the camera at it yeah you know I don't think I can do that I gotta talk the entire time right and we'll see how fast we can do this because I, I can get some sleep I get some sleep before we take the canoe out today I was fishing yesterday and uh, I'm taking the canoe out today so I'll probably be fishing today yeah obviously I was fishing last night too that's where these came from and yeah towards the end of the trip it was pretty cool there was there was stripers busting all over the place man it was it was great and would I you know like would I rather catch a 36 inch striper or would I catch you know one 36 inch striper fishing all night or would I catch would I rather catch you know 10 15 inch stripers or six 15 inch stripers I'd rather take the 15 inch stripers absolutely I'll take them all day long I mean the big ones are nice but I like the sport and the little ones you, you know size your tackle down and they're just a lot of fun a whole lot of fun and I caught my first largemouth yesterday for the season which was pretty cool and little, little Fred Jr. was there to see it that was great when he was under the bridge now we saw Freddie Freddie heard me talking uh, you know I guess apparently I have a distinct voice he heard me talking up on the bridge he says oh, that sounds like Jimmy I think I know that voice so he comes up and you know Mikey and I were just we were just talking about him because I texted him earlier uh, about fishing last night and um, I was asking Mikey um, what are his fishing habits you know does he want to does he want to fish and leave all the time or you know leave early all the time because I'm not into that I'm, I'm in it for the long haul I'm in it for the long haul big time I'll stay until until I can't stand anymore and it's not very good for my body but that's what I do I guess, I guess it is good for my body because I'm not I lead up now like I was before. Alright, that's all cleared up there. I'm just gonna clean it up. Now when you get it really good when I'm trying, you know, like when I'm not uh, you're not even seeing it. When I'm not trying to explain stuff and I'm just doing it like I've been doing it. And I don't have to explain stuff. I can actually do it much better. Like you'll see this one is gonna turn out a whole lot better than the other one. And my fish stock slash um, fish soup or fish chowder rather it definitely without measuring it's gonna would be way 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 better than when I tried measuring because it really didn't work out all that well had to add a lot of potato flakes to it so you know I probably wind up redoing that I mean, I'm going to post the one because I did it, you know. If you can't learn from your mistakes, you're not going to learn. And I guess I got to I gotta start measuring stuff so I know. So I know uh, about what's going on. Apparently, I don't know what's going on or I wouldn't have made such a egregious error with my calculations 
on the fish chowder. Alright, so right, again, we're just going to clean them up, make sure there's no bones in it. Uh, I guess while it's this way, I'll cut this one out. way and we're gonna clean these pin bones out yeah that wine was really really bad I was hoping it was the potato wine it was a uh, potato wine is surprisingly good and no that's not what they make vodka out of vodka's made up I mean they probably have made potato you know like potato wine into vodka at some time but vodka's made with barley sorry sorry to bust everybody's bubble Traditional vodka from Russia is actually made with potatoes when necessity dictates. And like when they don't have barley or anything else to make it with, barley, rye, wheat, you know, that, that type of stuff, any kind of grains, they'll use potatoes. But they, they can't just use straight potatoes. They need an enzyme, which is the barley the malted barley they could probably use malted corn as well but they'd have to use a lot of it because it doesn't hold the same amount of enzymes as, as malted uh, and enzymes as, as malted uh, malted barley malted barley has a lot of enzymes in it that can be used to uh, break the starches down in other grains and uh, vegetables yeah, you know what? When I, I when I get my my own pad, when this house sells, I'm gonna be doing some some wine making and some home brewing videos, and I'm really excited to do that because I haven't really had the opportunity to do it here, yeah, not so much because it is a mess. It's it, you know, let's face it. I started this this hobby of making wine and beer with the intention of making wine and beer in five gallon batches but as it turns out you can make a 15 gallon batch pretty much the same amount of time as you can make a five gallon batch so that's what i wind up doing is i make a bathtub full a bathtub full of beer and wine like just got to make everything as difficult as possible I do and uh, those of you who know me know this is very very true about myself but I get good at what I do sometimes well anyway here's the here's the uh, the fluke flounder that's ready for stuffing and they look pretty good and now when you're ready to serve this yeah the one I the one I gave you instructions on how to do is kind of shoddy compared to the one that I just did freestyle anyway what I was saying is when you serve this right you can see this ribbon and these bones right here they're kind of standing up straight there so just imagine this thing's all stuffed and puffed out like that you would take a fork and just go down right here all right when it's all cooked liberate this part with a fork and then just pull it off right and there's none down here there's no bones down here the ribbons are down there but they're all edible and then you got the collar bone here and you got a little tiny bone here so cut this off pull this off and you got a boneless butterfly cloak that's it that's it Hope you enjoyed. I'm probably gonna have a uh, crappie slash largemouth bass fishing video in the canoe with Dylan today. I'm set tomorrow again. Uh, and well, maybe, maybe not. Depends on if we catch anything, or if he even wants to fish. He might, he might just say no. I don't want to fish that because you're kind of intense when you fish. I don't know what he's talking about. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hope this helped. Be sure and check out my artwork on jerseyjimfish.com.
and you got to push the shop button. Uh, it's in the calendar. If I, if I keep this uh, theme, that's what it's called, a theme. Yeah, I'm really impressed that I know that too. Alright, so anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.